Hello, Brewtubers at Beyond the New. Um, you join me for a double beer review um, of two Lindemann's beers. Now, um, Lindemann's are more famous for their fruit beers. They do a uh, blackcurrant cassis beer, a cherry beer, and a framboise um, raspberry beer. They're the most well known of the Lindemann's beers, Lambics. Um, very low alcohol, very fruity, um, look like fruit juice. They're fruit beers, um, very well known. However, I've come across one or two, two of the less well-known beers. Um, this one here, which is the um, Pear, the Pesh, I can't read it, the Pesheress, uh, 2.5%. And um, a Grand Cave, I think it's it's over there in the fridge still. So um, I thought we'd give them a go and see what they're like, because I think these are probably some of the less well known in their range. Rather a saucy little photo there of a light bit of breast. <laughs> anyway, um, I think this is a peach flavoured beer, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, brewed in Belgium. Let's open it up. Oh dear, get rid of this, bye bye. And with all Lindemann's beers, it comes with a crown top and a cork. So a neat little cork screw. Not very often have to use this on a beer, but never mind. Lovely jubbly. Right, so let's get it poured in the glass. This is a nucleated glass, as you can see. There's a lot of activity going on in there. It looks lovely. Very clear. You can see through it. Hello! Um, Nice sort of amber colour, looks like a lager. <sighs> Let's have a sniff of the old nose. Yeah, that smells like peaches. <laughs> yeah, I think this is definitely a peach beer. Mmm, a very light peachy smell from this peach beer. Wow. Right, let's drink it. If it smells like peaches, it's not going to smell like anything else. Mmm, that's nice, that. Very sweet, like all the beers in the range. Um, yeah, it just does taste like beery peach. It's a very simple beer, you know. You buy the cherry beer, you buy the cherry Lindemann's that tastes like cherry, you buy the raspberry Lindemann's that tastes like raspberry, buy the peach one, it tastes like peaches. Mm, it's nice though. Are these sours? I don't really know. I think Lambics are supposed to be sour, but this isn't sour at all. It's very sweet. It's very sweet. I suppose some of the other ones, like the cherry ones, that's a little bit sour in the finish, but I think the Lindemans are very, very sweet um, beers. But yes, it looks nice, doesn't it? Mm. You know, and at two and a half percent, you could drink quite a few of those and be rather happy. If you know someone who doesn't like beers, give them one of these and they'll probably like it. Because it doesn't taste much like beer. You know what they say, there's a beer for everyone, for people who don't like beers. These are the best thing for them to try because they just taste like fruit juice. It's like the alcoholic fizzy fruit juice, but. Mm. Very nice.
very nice. You enjoy that in the summer. Outside the garden, which is lovely and hot, and the beer's lovely and cold. Anyway, I'll enjoy the rest of it, and then we'll open the other one. Right, so from the peachy one to perhaps the more curious of the two, which is the Lindemann's uh, Cuvée René Oud Goose. I've said that probably all wrong, but if you can read that, then great. 100% authentic Lambic from 2017. Uh, since 1822, Lindemann's has been making traditional lambic brewing into an art form. One of their finest products, the, here it goes, Old Goose Cuvée René, is the result of a three-year re-fermentation process. The wild yeast in the air of Padjotan land, water, malted barley, wheat, and aged hop flowers all contribute to the intriguing and complex palate of this noble beer. I'm not going to say it again, but this beer sparkles gold in the glass and it is fragrant with aromas of sherry. Hmm. It's got a very nice sort of golden label, which sort of goes to like yellow. Anyway, let's crack her open and see what we make of it. Um, I think this is going to be the more interesting of the Lindemann's beers I've tried. The other one's been fairly, um, fairly do what they say on the tin, you know. You get a cherry beer, you get a cherry beer, you get a peach beer, you get a peach beer. But what are we going to get here? Who knows? Right, insert the corking removing device. Lovely. I can't really smell anything from there, but let's uh, pour it in here. There is a bit of um, sediment in the bottle, so this one's bottle conditioned. You have six percent. Oh, we've doubled. We've doubled the uh, percentage. So slightly darker than the peach one we've just looked at, and it's also hazy. You can hear see through that, and it doesn't appear to be as fizzy. It's a little. Bit of carbonation coming up, but no near, near as much as the previous one. Can I kind of smell anything yet? Yeah, still smells a little bit peachy, perhaps that's from the glass. I did wash the glass out first, but I do have a cold, so smelling things, unless the smell is very obvious, um, it's going to be a bit tricky. Now, I'm getting fragrance, so it's a sweet fragrance there. Um, sweet, but an old sort of sweet smell, you know. It's um, like an oak sort of sweetness. It was a slightly woody smell. A bit cidery almost, like an apple, like a sweet sort of oak apple sort of this nose to it. That's the best my nose is going to pick up. Let's dive in. Okay. That is very, 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 very different. Okay, start off with it's very dry. Um, that's the immediate reaction I get. And it's a little bit cidery, like a vintage cider. I've, I've had one of this style before, these oud goos, and um, yes, I thought it tasted like a vintage cider before, so it must be obviously a, a feature of the style, this sort of dry, <coughs> apple-y, oaky sort of taste. Mm. There is something else there as well. 
and it has a nice multi finish, which is interesting. Mm, it's a very complex beer. What is that taste though? There's some sort of like savoury taste there. I can't quite put my finger on it though. Um, yeah, that's quite difficult. So, initial hit of dryness. A slight aged vintage cider, apple taste to it. Um, and then a really very subtle um, undertone of malt there. It really only sort of comes up um, after you've finished you know, after you swallowed it, you sort of then get a, a very mild malt flavour. Mm. What is that other taste though? I want to say it's like something like ham or bacon. But I know that's not really the right way to describe it, but that's what I want to say, which is odd, isn't it? It's like a cured meat, like a parma ham or something, but also not quite so meaty. But it's got that sort of cured flavour. Then you get sort of like a, a woody taste. That's a very complex beer, actually. Very complex beer. I mean, out of all the Lindemann's beers I've tried, that's very different to any of them. You know, as, as I said before, you buy a raspberry one, it tastes like raspberries, but this one, because it's you know, not a flavoured beer, there is no fruit as far as I'm aware in this. It's um, got a lot of complex flavours, and it's very good as a result. It's probably better if you have this with food. I remember when I first tried um, a, I won't say it's a goose style beer, I might be saying that wrong, but um, it was a boon goose, I believe it was, and I was told to have it with a bacon sandwich, and it went together very nicely. But I think that's a style which it complements food better than it is by itself. Whether that's true or not, but that's my own personal opinion. Mm. But that is a very interesting beer. An interesting beer. Do I like it? I would buy it again. I think it's a beer, a social beer as well. It's a sort of beer which you wouldn't appreciate it drinking it by yourself, but having it with a friend and sort of going through, ooh, what can you taste? What do you think it tastes like? That's probably, uh, it's a social beer. You can form your opinions with your friends. But no, that's, that's interesting. I don't know if there's any more of these Lindemann beers I haven't tried, other than the fruity ones and this one. It'll be interesting to have a look through their range. I've liked all the beers I've tried from them. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that, because uh, I haven't got really much more to say on the matter. But uh, yes, well worth getting, if you find it. Where did I get it from? I think I got it from Beer Hawk or Beers of Europe, one or two places. Um, but yes, it's worth a go. It is worth a go. Thank you very much for watching. I should really go and do some bottling now, but I doubt I will. And yes, see you all again soon. Ta-ra!